Today, the Big Apple becoming the first city in the country to require vaccine proof for people to eat, exercise and watch performances indoors. The Securities and Exchange Commission chair discussing the future of regulation in the crypto space. He compares it to the Wild West. And the latest victim of China's regulatory crackdown, Tencent and NetEase. Their shares nosedived today after state media criticized their products. That and much more coming up on Entity Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Graney. The head of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Gary Gensler, says the crypto market needs stricter rules before it can fulfill its potential. Right now, it's like the Wild West, he says. Crypto is a relatively new asset class and isn't as regulated as heavily as others. Investors have been hurt by scams and failed projects since its introduction. Whether it's Bitcoin or other crypto assets, if U.S. investors are are getting exposure or buying or selling these, then our remit is to ensure for investor protection. And he's not just worried about scams. He says crypto is also being used for money laundering, to skirt laws and sanctions, and to extort money from businesses. Earlier this year, one of America's most important pipeline operators, Colonial Pipeline, was hacked and its systems were held to ransom. The hackers reportedly asked to be paid in Bitcoin and Colonial sent them over $4 million worth. Bitcoin transfers can be considered more anonymous than regular wire transfers. Crypto assets are being used for ransomware, for dark web applications. And so how do we, how do we sort of, uh, frankly, uh, rein that in, uh, uh, this new form of potential private money? But many in the crypto space don't want to see more government regulation. They prefer to let the, uh, let the buyer beware approach and would prefer to educate people and let them make their own choices. Typical free market limited government approach. In the crypto space, investors can trade and lend cryptocurrency without the need for a middleman. It's all done through a computer program whose code is visible to the public. But Gensler says these platforms need to be regulated before they're adopted widely comparing it to cars on the road. We wouldn't have the use of automobiles today if we didn't have some basic bargain. If we had no traffic lights, no no stop signs, no cop on the beat. Wall Street's main index has closed higher today, gains in Apple and healthcare stocks. The Dow rose 278 points, 0.8 percent. S&P 500 gained 36 points, also 0.8 percent. The Nasdaq added over 80 points today, about half a percent. And Fortune has released its list of the 500 biggest companies around the world. And Walmart, coming in at number one, is no surprise. It's claimed the top spot on the list for eight years in a row. But another retailer is gaining momentum. Amazon landed in third place this year, a big leap from ninth in 2020. But neither company was the world's most profitable. That title goes to Apple, which netted $57 billion in profits. And Google kicked off smartphone season by previewing its new Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro smartphones. The company shared a colorful assortment of new smartphones in a series of tweets and a video posted to its website. The phones feature the first ever Google-made processor specifically designed for the Pixel. The company says the Pixel will be faster, more customizable and more secure thanks to the Tensor chip. The Pixel 6 features a 6.4-inch flat display with wide and ultra-wide cameras on the back. The Pixel 6 Pro has a bigger, slightly curved display with a telephoto lens. No word on pricing yet, but similar models go for about $1,000. Google said it will share more details about the devices in the fall. And snack and beverage giant PepsiCo is cutting out juice to juice its profits. The company said today it's selling Tropicana, Naked and other juice brands in North America to French private equity PAI partners. PepsiCo will retain some stake in the new joint venture and get exclusive rights to distribute the brands in the United States. PepsiCo is trying to move away from sugary drinks that health-conscious customers are ditching. Its CEO says the sale will give the company the funds to develop health-focused snacks and zero-calorie beverages. Unlike its rival Coca-Cola, PepsiCo has been streamlining its product line to focus more on profitable brands. Operating profit margins for its juice businesses were lower 
compared to its other units. And animal rights activists have scored a legal victory in Texas. A federal judge has ruled that chicken farmers will have to disclose more information about their business practices. That includes the number of hens per facility and the number of birds per cage. The Animal Legal Defense Fund has been pushing for that information for years, but the FDA has kept it under wraps, saying it falls under rules that protect trade secrets. But recently, a judge disagreed, writing in a ruling that farmers never took steps to protect that information themselves, so now the government has 30 days to release the details. And animal rights concerns have some Californian restaurants worried about their bacon. The state wants to enforce a new law that could make 96% of all pork ineligible for sale there. California accounts for around 15% of the national pork market. Anthony Zevlin Lee has more. California plans to start enforcing an animal welfare proposition beginning next year. That means pig, chicken and veal breeders will need to provide more space for the animals. Farms that can't reach the standard will be banned from selling in the state. And that's while California itself has virtually no pork production, according to Jim Monroe, a spokesperson for the National Pork Producers Council. It's one thing for California to regulate businesses in its own state, but in the case of Proposition 12, uh, it's regulating pork production practices nationwide. Only 4% of hog farms think they can comply with the regulation. Although the mandate of the proposition was passed in 2018, the state of California failed to put forward detailed regulations in time. Now the pork industry doesn't have much time to adjust. That means 96% of the pork produced in our nation won't be eligible to be sold in California. Uh, So you can only imagine the impact that could have on the availability of pork for restaurants, for consumers. Glenn Stolt, CEO of Christensen Farms, estimates that initial prices could jump as much as 50 percent. The California Restaurant Association says it's very concerned about the potential cost increases. One restaurant owner in California explained that small restaurants can't afford big price increases. The Humane Society says that the pork industry should not try to overturn laws relating to animal cruelty. But Monroe says the ballot is riddled with flaws because it was written without insights of those who understand hog farming. Monroe says the NPPC recently submitted comments to the state of California, hoping to delay the proposition until January 2022. Evelyn Lee, NTD News. A failed effort to unionize at an Amazon warehouse in Alabama may be revived. A federal officer is recommending a new vote take place. In April, Amazon workers rejected an effort to unionize, but a new report from the Labor Relations Board says there is evidence that Amazon interfered with the election. After the April election, the union accused Amazon of illegal practices, including intimidating workers, distributing vote-no paraphernalia to employees, and setting up what amounted to an on-site collection box for ballots. An officer with the NLRB said the drop box in particular interfered with the board's exclusive role in conducting the election. The officer said this impacted the conditions for a fair vote, but Amazon stands by the election, saying employees voted overwhelmingly in favor of a direct connection with their managers and the company. One of America's biggest meat producers, Tyson Foods, is requiring all its workers in the United States to get vaccinated. Its CEO says that right now only half of the employees have done it. Tyson is possibly the largest company to mandate the vaccine. It says the vaccine is the best way to protect workers as new strains of the virus spread. Fitness firm Equinox will also require vaccination for not just employees, but for customers at its fitness locations in New York City. The company wants a one-time proof of vaccination starting September. It says a survey shows 96% of members and 89% of employees are already vaccinated. Both Equinox and Tyson will allow vaccine exemptions for religious or medical reasons. McDonald's is making masks mandatory for both customers and staff in areas with high virus transmission rates, regardless of your vaccination status. And New York City will become the first U.S. city to require proof of CCP virus vaccine for a range of activities like indoor dining, gyms, and performances. Mayor Bill de Blasio made the announcement today. It will require vaccination for workers and customers in indoor dining, in indoor fitness facilities, 
indoor entertainment facilities. This is going to be a requirement. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. If you want to participate in our society fully, you got to get vaccinated. The move will start later in August and enforcement will start in mid-September. It's not clear if the pass will be extended to other venues, including supermarkets or places that sell essential items. We contacted the mayor's office for comment, but no reply yet. The civil liberties groups and Republicans have flagged vaccine passport type systems as unconstitutional, saying they endanger basic civil liberties, including the right to privacy. They've also said the passports would create a two-tiered society of vaccinated and unvaccinated people. And as the Chinese Communist Party's next target online gaming, an article in Chinese state-run media called for more restrictions on the industry, spooking investors today. And the Don Ma has more. Chinese state-run media recently referred to online gaming as opium, causing shares of its own tech companies to nosedive. Game maker Tencent dropped around 7%, and NetEase dropped around 14%. It seems like they really are almost cutting off their nose to spite their face with all of the things they have done, not only to clamp down on businesses, but to silence or disappear an awful lot of their most prominent business people. Right, Ron? Yeah. This comes amid a series of CCP regulatory crackdowns that have erased $400 billion from the value of U.S. listed Chinese companies. Firms hit include Alibaba, Ant Group, Didi, and so on. But let me ask you the simple, dumb question, which is, why are they doing this? Why is Xi on this path? Well, I mean, it's almost a replay of, of, of the Maoist experience. It's, it's, it's power and, and politics over prosperity and profitability. And I think, you know, that is a, a, a dangerous concept. The Chinese state-run media agency, Economic Information Daily, called for more restrictions on the gaming industry to prevent addiction among children. It said that in 2020, more than half of China's children were nearsighted and that online games negatively affected their education. Don Ma, NTD News. And Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba missed forecasts in the first quarter. Its revenue fell short of estimates for the first time in over two years. It was hit by growing competition from smaller rivals like JD.com, but at the same time, that regulatory crackdown continues to weigh on the firm. Alibaba has become one of the main targets of the crackdown. Late last year, regulators halted a planned $37 billion IPO of Ant Group, the fintech affiliate of Alibaba. During an earnings call today, Alibaba's CEO said the company would continue to monitor the impact of the regulatory changes. A Chinese nuclear power plant shut down one of its reactors to fix the damage of some of its fuel rods. It comes more than a month after the leakage was first made known to the public. A nuclear power plant in China recently shut down its reactor, reportedly to fix a leak. The facility is called the China Taishan Nuclear Power Project. The plant revealed Friday that a minor leakage was found during normal operation. China Guangdong Nuclear Power Group owns 70 percent of the power plant. French power group EDF owns the rest, while an EDF division called Framatome helps operate the plant. Framatome released a warning about the leak, detailing what it calls an imminent radiological threat. It voiced the concerns to the Biden administration on June 8th. The warning accuses China of raising its legal radiation limit to avoid having to shut the plan down. That's according to a CNN report. The French company asked for U.S. permission to provide technical support for the issue, but the White House said the facility is not yet at a crisis level after a week-long assessment. The Taishan nuclear power plant soon released a similar memo, saying regular monitoring data shows the Taishan station and its surrounding environment are normal. At the same time, a major Chinese media outlet accused CNN of spreading rumors about the Chinese nuclear plant. Still to come this evening, Reese Witherspoon's media company is sold to a Blackstone-backed venture. Witherspoon believes the new cash infusion will help the group's productions grow. And a double whammy for coffee growers in Brazil impacting production in the country. How much has production fallen and how will you be impacted? That and more after this short break. Hello, 
I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Welcome back. Actress Reese Witherspoon's media company is selling itself to a new media firm backed by the Blackstone Group. The terms of the deal weren't disclosed. Hello Sunshine was founded in 2016 and is the women-led production house behind series like HBO's Big Little Lies, The Morning Show on Apple TV Plus and Little Fires Everywhere. People familiar with the matter told Reuters the sale will value the company at about $900 million. The board of the newly formed company will include Witherspoon and Hello Sunshine Chief Executive Sarah Harden. Harden will continue to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the production house. And as summer continues to heat up, an app is allowing people to rent out their swimming pools, connecting them with eager customers looking for a cool reprieve. Anthony's Andrew Thomas reports. An inflatable pink flamingo floats leisurely, surrounded by plants on the pool deck. Carmen Sanchez rents this backyard oasis by the hour on the website Swimply. Swimply calls itself the Airbnb of private swimming pools and has joined what's now known as the sharing economy. Sanchez began renting her swimming pool last May after learning about the website from a friend. At first, I was a little reluctant because I said, oh, I, you know, I don't know who's coming. I, I, I want to make sure they feel comfortable and I feel comfortable. But it's been the best experience to have someone enjoy my home as much as me and make it feel like their own is something very special. Sanchez lives in Queens, but people come to her home from all over New York City to relax in the sun. She rents her pool for $75 an hour and says she can earn about $8,000 a month. Usually I get a lot of renters from the city who are living in apartment buildings and or in homes with probably no backyards. And they come here and they have a wonderful time. They call it a staycation, yes. Asher Weinberger and Bunham Laskin are the minds behind Swimply. The duo started in 2018 by offering Laskin's neighbors in New Jersey access to their swimming pools for a fee. Our vision really is the extension of the sharing economy beyond the functional, right? The sharing economy, Uber, Airbnb, very functional. Hospitality, transportation, things you need every single day. What we're trying to do is to extend the sharing economy to the experiential, the things you want to do, to give you a feeling of luxury, a feeling that of a lifestyle that you couldn't necessarily afford, but now you can, right? That's what we're trying to do. It's an extension of the sharing economy. That idea grew into a web-based booking platform. It now offers access to about 15,000 pools in the United States, Canada, and Australia. Swimply takes a 15% profit from hosts and another 10% from guests. There are safety and hygiene guidelines. Swimply conducts site inspections and offers hosts liability insurance. Andrew Thomas, 
NTD News. And a vehicle that has been deemed uncool is now filling driveways. The minivan is experiencing a major comeback. According to a report from Cox Automotive, minivans sold for 8% above the sticker price last month. By comparison, cars, trucks and SUVs all sold at sticker price during the same period. Many consumers say the minivan's extra space, high seats and sliding doors make them attractive. Right now, only about four automakers offer minivans in the U.S. One of them is Chrysler, recently made updates to its Pacifica van by giving it a new front face and an improved interior. And low temperatures and drought have become a disastrous combination for coffee growers in Sao Paulo, Brazil. As much as 70% of the crop has been lost. Anthony Sandra Thomas reports. Coffee beans have withered on the vine. Cucunda is the largest coffee production region in Sao Paulo. Almost three quarters of residents depend on the crop. Jose Augusto de Almeida, a farmer, lost 70% of his 100 acres, all cultivated with coffee trees. But many farmers lost everything. It is sad. It is not just the work from one year that we lost. It is the work of an entire lifetime. It takes time to get this far. Investments in machines. We have a very well cared for and productive crop. The costs are very high and suddenly in one night you lose everything. Almeida is also concerned about his employees and the people he hires during the three to four months of harvesting. For 45-year-old worker Marcelo Cesar de Cunha, the devastation could hit his family hard. The money he makes during the harvest feeds his family for the entire year. We were counting on this coffee harvest to help us. It hit us by surprise, and we found ourselves with no resources. Frost has caused the leaves to fall off plants, and harvesting the coffee beans is much harder. But frost wasn't the only problem. Drought has also affected the harvest. Rain hasn't fallen for the last six months, leaving fields of coffee plants brown and dry. Coffee production in Brazil has fallen by around 16% in 2021, according to government figures, causing a spike in world prices. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. And those frosts are driving up the price of a coffee coin. That's the first cryptocurrency in the world backed by coffee stocks, and it's having a pretty good run, up more than 35% in the first month. The coffee coin is created by a coffee cooperative in Brazil. It's a type of stable coin. The price is affected by the price of coffee in the physical market. It also depends on investors' demand in the so-called secondary market. And during its first month, the currency rose from its launch price of around $2.70 to about $3.50 last week. The physical coffee market rose over 30% in the same period. It's off its high now, but coffee prices also fell a bit. And could drone displays replace fireworks and be the future show of choice in the night sky? One British company is betting on that, and NTD's Arlene Richards has the details. Could swarms of drones replace fireworks? British company Celestial flies as many as 300 drones in formation and says the technology could soon replace fireworks. My background's a filmmaker and I've been working with screens for a long time. And when I first looked into drone displays, I realized that the night sky is a giant three-dimensional screen of epic proportions. And the possibilities creatively are completely unlimited. He says this is a brand new artistic medium. Plus, they don't cause fires. We love fireworks, but they blow things up. They're single use. They make things catch on fire and they scare animals. The Tokyo Olympics opened with a drone display. India and China have tried to limit the number of fireworks during the Lunar New Year and Diwali. Sydney may even use drones for its famous New Year display to reduce the risk of bushfires. Hopkins Company is hoping to capitalize on this shift and in his words, create something creatively more interesting and green. Arlene Richards, NTD News. There you go. As the latest business updates for today, you can still catch Entity Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For Entity Business, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.
have a new channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube at NTD News. Get the highlights of our news broadcast and the most important headlines that we curate especially for you. Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source.